Hey guys, David here and welcome to Dotlab Tech. So there are many different filaments out there that do many things like being filled with wood, metal, carbon fiber or being flexible. But today we're going to look at something a bit different. Conductive filament. This should allow you to make 3D prints which also have an electrical function. In theory this sounds quite amazing, so today we're going to test how this works in practice. So first off some transparency. 3 dk Berlin did send me this filament for review, but they didn't pay me in any way for this review and everything I say is 100% my own opinion. But now let's start off with how this filament actually works. So many of you will know that plastic isn't particularly good at conducting things. In fact, it is often used as an insulator. So how can PLA all of a sudden be conductive? So the magic trick that they use here is that they take carbon and infuse it with the PLA. This then gives a mix which can be printed like PLA but has also some properties of carbon, which is rather good conductivity. Of course this can't be 100% carbon as then you wouldn't be able to print it. So they needed to find a balance between the carbon content and the plastic content. So the resulting mix of plastic and carbon is rather brittle as carbon itself is pretty brittle and if you put too much material into PLA it doesn't get much softer as it is already rather brittle to begin with. But 3D cable in managed to find a mixture which is easily printable without it cracking up into in the extruder but at the st same time has an acceptable amount of resistance. Now speaking of resistance, your printed parts won't be like wires. Because as there still is a lot of plastic in the way, these parts have a rather high resistance. Of in this case it is about 500 ohms per centimeter with the raw material. Now because your entire print will be conductive, this material ideally is used in a dual extruder machine as then you can print with one hot end with standard PLA and the other hot end with the conductive material. As the conductive material is based on PLA, it sticks very well to PLA and can be easily printed together with it. I don't have such a dual extruder machine, so the prints I'm going to show you today don't quite use the full potential of this material, but it will give you a good idea of what you can do. So what you can see here is a kind of flashlight where I just printed two little blocks that connect an LED to a standard 4.5 volt battery. Now because there is quite a lot of resistance in this part, I don't need to add a resistor to the LED, as the part itself is the resistor. Now the biggest problem with this print and all the other prints there is, is the contact between the LED and the part that I printed. Now the problem there is that the carbon of course is in infused with the plastic. But uh, that also means that on the surface there aren't that many carbon particles that are exposed. And so it, the contact between the wires of the LED or battery and the 3D printed parts isn't that well. Within the 3D printed part the connection is rather well, but as you can see if I move this LED around a bit the brightness varies quite a lot and that's because the contact between the 3D printed part and the LED changes a bit. So that is something that you have to consider when you're printing things, that the contact between the, your standard electronic parts and the 3D print model mostly isn't that ideal. So here you can see another example with LEDs and you can see a bit how the resistance works here as well. So I 
added these LEDs down this strip, which I printed, and on the ends I connect up a power supply, which will give the LEDs the power. And you can see the further down the LEDs go, the less bright they are. And that's because the resistor, or the 3D printed part, which in this case is the resistor, gets longer and longer. And so there isn't as good as a connection. Now, you could change this by infusing a strand of copper wire into your print. This of course adds some extra work, but then you can drastically cut down the resistance over longer distances, as copper has much better conductivity than this 3D printed material. I also printed this strip of material, which can be used as a variable resistor. By moving the screws apart from each other, the resistor gets longer and so the resistance is higher. This could be hooked up to some sound generator, where you can modify the frequency based on the resistor. Or you can use it to adjust the value, volume, or whatever idea you have. If you plan on making any kind of more sophisticated project with this material, you will have to find some way to ensure that the contact between the normal electronics and the 3D printed part is really secure and will not change over time. As I already mentioned, this material isn't perfect in any way. First of all, the resistance it has is too high for many electronic app appliances, as you will lose a lot of signal strength and other characteristics over a bit longer distance. Also, the contact problem which I mentioned is still there and will limit the possibilities you have. The resistance problem may be fixed with the protopasta version of the 3D conductive filament, but I haven't tried it yet, so I can't say anything about that. It is also quite limiting that to really do something with it, you will need a dual extruder machine. As with my machine, I just can't do any complex shapes, as I can't fill in the voids and can only print one conductor at a time. So in conclusion, this is a really fun material to play around with and I had a lot of fun with this video. It certainly is something that in the future may be used for many appliances and maybe you can 3D print your electronic replacements or whatever you will need in the future with that. But at the moment this is rather a gimmick and something that you can play around if you're a maker and maybe you find an interesting use case for it. If you do, please leave a link down below or to a picture of it or something so that I can check it out. Because I can't come up with too many ideas using this. So if you liked this video, please leave a like down below and also consider to subscribe. I also have a brand new website that you can check out at the link below. Thanks for watching and until next time.